Welcome to the third episode of Wired Up Retro. Today I will show you how to convert Atari, Commodore 64, Sega Master System, and Genesis controllers from left-hand control to right-hand control with an easy-to-make 9-pin controller adapter that I like to call the 180 adapter. Secondly, you'll see how to make an adapter that will change the way you hold certain game controllers, which can adjust the ergonomics in unexpectedly good ways. I'm calling it the 90 adapter because it alters your holding position by 90 degrees, and this is probably something you've never seen uh, anybody else do on any other YouTube channel. And lastly, for those of you who watched episode 2, I'll be showing you how to make the converter for the Atari Flashback Mini 7800 controller for NES compatibility. This is a simple adapter that requires the use of a cutoff NES controller cord and a solderless 9-pin um, connector. And it'll also work to um, make any NES clone controller, which there are a variety of them, uh, compatible with the NES. So, welcome to Wired Up Retro. Let's have some fun. Okay, so before we get started with the tutorial on how to make the 90 and the 180 adapter, I just want to show you some of those controllers that I had featured just a few minutes or over the past minute. Uh, this is the uh, Sega control stick made for the Master System, and it can be used on Atari 2600, even Genesis, um, obviously Commodore 64, Atari 7800 even. And basically this would be a, a good candidate for uh, right-handed uh, gamers to game with a joystick on the right side. Um, if you use the 180, it could be made into a left-hand joystick if you're a lefty. And it works just fine that way. It also can be made uniquely to be like this for a 90 degree uh, adaptation. So basically you just put your uh, right hand controlling the stick, left hand controls the buttons, button 1 and 2 for Master Sicily. So I like that controller. I think it's uh, a very unique one. Another Sega made controller, or for Sega system anyway, is the QuickShot uh, QS185. It's called the Conqueror 3. And this is a micro switch um, joystick. And when flipped upside down to do the 180 adapting, you can actually move this into position and use it as a 180 controller. I like this joystick. It, it, it may not be perfectly accurate um, compared to some of my other sticks, but it's 
it's a nice one. I like the micro switches. Um, this Camerica Freedom Stick is also a micro switch joystick and it's designed to be used with Nintendo. But if you plug into the receiver, the uh, Camerica made Genesis uh, plug in, you can actually use this on an Atari 2600 and maybe a 7800. I discussed this at length in video number one. I think that the Freedom Stick is a great uh, joystick. It definitely has a good feel to it. And with the 180, you can flip it around and use your right hand uh, to control the, the games. Another stick that I want to feature here is a little newer school. This is not old school. This is PlayStation uh, 2 compatible, or you could say PlayStation 1, the Nyko Maximizer. Um, again, not a, um, a micro switch joystick handle, but uh, it does very well. And I, I've enjoyed playing games like Ms. Pac Man with it. I think it's quite accurate. And when put into the right hand mode, I even like it more. And you can swivel this so out to the uh, other position, so X button is there for games, uh, maybe Defender or Centipede. I think it's a great controller uh, because of this feature. And you know, for a person like me who wants to use the right hand, um, the 180 adapter allows it to, to be used very effectively. Another uh, controller for PlayStation, by the way, you're probably wondering, how in the world are you getting PlayStation controllers to work with the Atari game systems? And the answer is through two adapters connected together. This is a Tototech adapter called uh, Classic Joypad Converter version MD. MD stands for Mega Drive. And it does uh, allow your PlayStation compatible controller to plug in here and then be plugged into a Genesis. This is specifically a Genesis um, plug-in. It will not uh, be allowed to work on the 2600, mainly because this adapter is very needy. It takes um, power from pin number 5 of this, um, actually pin 5 is here, of this plug-in. And in order to <clears throat> for an Atari system to send power on pin 5, you have to buy a Sega Genesis controllers to Atari Systems adapter cable. And this is made by Best Electronics. They have a website. You can obtain this for probably around $12. Um, of course, unfortunately, their website requires a minimum purchase of around 20, uh, 20 bucks. So you're going to have to buy something else if you go to their website to purchase this. But they've got plenty of great products, and um, it's definitely well worth a visit. Um, another possible option to use instead of this is a more expensive adapter, and I mentioned this before. This is the Seagull 78 by Edladen, and this allows for not just one button compatibility, but two button compatibility for those 7800 games that uh, are two button games. So you just plug that in here, it turns Genesis controllers and controller adapters into uh, Atari 20 or 7800 compatible. Um, uh, for, for 7800 compatibility. All right, so this will allow this controller to work on the 2600s and uh, 7800s, and you can use the 180 adapter to put it into right hand mode. And I even like this joystick sitting on my lap with the um, the buttons on the left and the stick down here. And that 90 de degree adapter will allow for this type of control. I think it. Uh, Definitely feels good when playing a game in my lap with that. And one last PlayStation controller I'll show you is the um, PS Arcade made by Interact. Uh, this one, again, micro switch. The other two I was just showing you for PlayStation don't have micro switches in the joystick, but this one does. And uh, it's a pretty heavy controller. I definitely think it's um, more for table use because of the weight but I think it's a, a nice controller and yeah, you can easily flip that to be a right joystick using the 180 adapter. This is, by the way, my 180 adapter. So we're going to go into showing a little bit of how to make the 180 adapter on our next uh, uh, little section of our video. Okay, one thing I do want to go over before we actually make the 90 and the 180 adapters is this um, idea that maybe you could take a, an extension cord for a Genesis controller, video game controller, and basically um, just cut it in half, strip off each wire, and then check with a digital multimeter the actual um, individual wires by touching this to each one while 
checking each hole with this until you register a number on a digital multimeter screen. And then mapping out numbers 1 through 9, pins 1 through 9, using that method with a divided extension cord for Genesis, you may be able to um, you know, decide, okay, how am I going to map out a 180 adapter or a 90 adapter. So it's actually feasible to do it that way. We're not going to be showing you how to do that. That may involve some soldering or at least twizzling together, um, you know, cord uh, wires that are tiny and, you know, shrink tubing. Uh, it gets a little involved. So we're going to instead use um, a solderless connector, which involves just basically using a screwdriver that will be screwing down um, individual screws onto each wire. And that is actually a pretty efficient way of doing it. Um, just a reminder here, this, um, this is a male side of an uh, adapter and it counts uh, pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pin 6 is st starting here, 7, 8, and 9. Now on a female side of a uh, connector, you count the opposite direction. You start here on the right side with number 1 and that's 2, there's 3, there's 4, there's 5 and six, seven, eight, nine. So hopefully that little uh, information could come in very handy for you. It always works that way. All right, so I, w I will show you my adapters. This is my 90 adapter. This is my 180 adapter. The 180 is a lot shorter. I did this purposely so that I wouldn't get them mixed up or, you know, I also labeled them obviously, but it's just easier for me if I have one that's a little short, one that's a little long. And we're going to actually put away the 90 adapter, and I'll show you some things about the uh, 180 adapter at the moment. So the first step that you're going to want to take is to get a cord of the length that you decided to use, and then to proceed to cut off about two inches um, of the length of the cord, and you're going to want to get your scissors not too tight down on this because if you do the um, the cord is going to end up completely snipping off and that wouldn't be good. You just want to try to get the covering off. So we're working at it here. This is a process gradual and don't want to press down too hard on the scissors. And I, You know you can use a razor blade if you want to if you think that you'll be gentle enough to not cut through into some of the wires on the inside. There we go. And what you'll have here, you'll have some extra stuff that needs to be eliminated. A little cord there, that probably is a ground cord, but you don't need it. You're going to use one of the colored wires um, as your ground. There's also in some of these uh, a little paper piece, okay? And you can eliminate that. This particular um, cord has a variety of different colors in it, but and there are 10 cords inside. You want to pick one that has 10. Um, one more than nine is a good plan. If you find one that has 12, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, 10 at minimum. If you just do one that has nine, well, while you're trying to clip off the end of uh, the plastic over one of these, if you keep messing up and, and uh, clipping it off, you will regret only having nine. Having the backup for number 10 is a good plan. And you can buy a crimping tool that um, can basically, or stripping tool, that can get the uh, plastic off. I just use scissors. I kind of picked at it. And that leaves about four millimeters, maybe five of exposed wire, and that should be uh, plenty. Um, this particular kind of cord, though, has some colors, but a lot of black wires. That's not really the ideal. Um, what would be the ideal would be, I already have one of these, I've got one side hooked up to it, um, a, a, a bunch of wires that are different colors and each one being distinctly different from one another. That's the ideal way to go. All right, so let me show you the actual solderless connector and there it is. All right, so the solderless connector itself I'll get it open for you here. 
has an internal part and in this component the um, this is the female side this is the side that goes to the system and again we're counting you know one through five six through nine so number one corresponds on the back here to this particular pin right here number one and if you flip it over it's the third one from the top one two three there's a little screw uh, head there and basically you loosen that screw up okay and now it's you know it's this little hole off to the side is prepared to receive the wire that you're going to put into it so yeah this is the side that goes to the system and then this side the male side goes uh, or has what you plug the controller into okay and let me just put it this way to you you can pick on the controller side um, just just decide for yourself what wire color goes into which hole so for me you know when I was doing this initially I put on uh, number one the gray cord okay okay so here we are with our nine pin connectors the male connector the female connector the male basically is what you plug your controller into it's kind of the basis for all of this and the female is where all the adaptations are made in the adapter so we're going to connect the male to female with the cord I'm going to go ahead and open this up just kind of give you again a little synopsis of what this adapter um, end connector is like got the screws on the top and on the bottom of the connector you have the indicator markings for each and every hole that's on the side you can see they're marked with different numbers and on the side are the holes so let's say here we wanted to put a white little uh, wire into number one which would be the third one down on this right side so when I flip it over it'll be on the left third one down I've loosened it up and we're going to go ahead with um, taking this white wire and bringing it forward and placing it right into the hole there and hopefully getting it on the first try into the hole these can be a little tricky but yeah these this one works pretty well okay so once you've got it pretty tight down there you can kind of pug, tug on it and pull on it make sure it's secure so you would do this for each and every one uh, making sure that they're in the right spot. You, you connect the nine wires by pinning them down in the holes that they're supposed to be put into by tightening down each of the nine screws. Okay, and now I do want to give you a little synopsis on a sheet that I prepared. So let's do that. All right, make sure I get this in the right place. Okay, so for a 180 adapter, you're going to basically um, just have the controller plugged in to the male side of the adapter, and then it goes to the female side. On the male side, I've indicated some uh, colors that I decided on. Number one, it goes to the gray wire, and then I just went through the spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, white, and black. Okay, and if you made the female side gray, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, white, and black. It would just be an extension cord. But we don't want an extension cord. What we want is a 180 adapter. So to do that, you, you take number two and make it number one, and make number one number two. Because number one represents up on these uh, game controller connectors, and two represents down, three represents left, I'll just do LT, and four represents right okay so on the first two you're gonna swap them so you'll have red over here and you'll have gray over here okay and number three instead of orange you would make it yellow because you're swapping them and left becomes right and the rest of its like an extension cord you're gonna put the green here blue here violet white and black okay so basically that's how it, the 180 adapter works contrary to that I'm going to show you the 90 adapter and how that one works it's a little bit a uh, little bit different okay so again we're gonna start with the gray and the red starts number two 
Um, Roy G. Biv, orange, yellow. And, you know, there you know the rest. Roy G. Biv, and then we did, what, white and black here. All right, and over here, you're going to basically take the, the one, okay, I'm going to write up, down, left, right. Okay, so you're going to convert what was up to the, the right, okay? I'm sorry, to the left. You're going to go from up to the left. So we're going to make number three gray, okay? And instead of number two going to one like it did before, number two this time is going to go to number four. So you're going to put red down here, and then you're going to have... Um, Let's see, number three goes to two, so the orange is now going to be on two instead of three. And then, of course, the last but not least, our yellow goes up to one. And again, we have the good correspondence with these. These are not going to be changed. The colors all remain the same, just like an extension cord. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense about the 90 adapter. By the way, this would be an adapter that lets you take the controller and turn it counterclockwise by 90 degrees. Okay, not clockwise, but counterclockwise. And I did that because on the Pelican arcade stick, it's the 90 degree counterclockwise rotation that makes it a little more of an effective controller. Um, and same with um, the Sega Master System control stick. If you, if you rotate it counterclockwise, it's a more effective uh, controller to hold. And on the, our last video, I did talk to you about how I would today, on our next video, um, provide an NES clone controller um, diagram. So let's do that. Um, this allows the Atari Flashback Mini 7800 joystick to convert uh, to an NES because you've cut off your NES uh, cord and you're left with these colors of wires and yellow goes to two and orange goes to three red goes to four and on seven you've got white and then on number eight you've got brown okay alright so hopefully that will help you out and by the way I've heard online that some NES controller cords or controllers in general had the yellow and the red swapped okay so if you aren't getting any traction let's say you're trying to convert this to your NES or your NES compatible Comerica Freedom Connection device that I talked about on our last video and you're not seemingly getting it to work try switching number four and number two swap them all right so I'd like to conclude our episode with just a couple of little things um, you now know how to make the uh, little Mini 7800 to NES adapter, which we had gone into quite a bit uh, on Episode 2. The Mini 7800 controller is, in my opinion, a very comfortable controller to hold. I think it's, uh, it's definitely a neat innovation with the more compact size. Also, NES clone controllers can be made to work on either the NES or the 7800. And I've noticed a discrepancy. I own some of those controllers. I own the V-Mega. This works on the NES using this special adapter, but it will not work with the Comerica products to allow it to work on the 7800. This is kind of a PlayStation knockoff. It's kind of a neat little feel to it. It's a, it's a compact PlayStation controller feel. Uh, this one is a Genesis knockoff called the uh, Power Player, an NES clone. The Power Player is pretty cheap, but uh, it, it does work on the NES with that adapter uh, with the little cord. But again, it's not going to be compatible with the 7800 with all those adapters we went over in episode two. Another one that does not work on the uh, Comerica products and the 7800 with the adapters is the GN Twin, but it will work on the NES using the special connector that we uh, showed you the pinout for today. The GN Twin is a Yobo product and it's an NES clone controller. Don't know why they don't work with, uh, with the Comerica products. A couple that do work with the Comerica products are this uh, Virtual Station. It's a PlayStation knockoff controller. I kind of like this one because it's got a concave uh, D-pad. It's very, very spherical and it's a little bouncy. I, I kind of like the feel of that uh, D-pad. So 
yeah, it's, it's one you might want to keep an eye out for. This one doesn't even have a name. I think it's definitely made in China. It's pretty unique. I call it the Batarang controller. It's kind of like a PlayStation 1 controller, and it's got uh, some sleek lines and some unique angles. Um, so, yeah, if you're into Batman uh, controllers, this might be your, your controller for the 7800 if you, you know, hook it all up the right way. Um, another thing I want to mention is that the, the, two, the, the 90 adapter and the 180 adapter can be connected to a quick shot product called the Chimera. This is a Chimera for the Sega Genesis, okay? The Chimera is, is unique because it's very asymmetric. It's got the trigger, which is the button A, and then you've got buttons B and C right here. And then the, uh, the D-pad, you could say, is one of the earliest D-pad controllers, but it's all digital, uh, not analog. And you control it with the left thumb. And I, of course, th thinking the way I do, hmm, I wonder what I could do with those adapters to get it to work with my right hand on the stick. So, you know, I, I put the 90-degree uh, adapter into place, and... Uh, that one is a counterclockwise adapter, which put it like this. And I put my right thumb here, but then the left thumb was way over to the side. It just wasn't working. So I thought, wow, wouldn't it be nice if I could do a clockwise 90 on that so that I could put my right thumb here and have these very accessible for my left thumb. And so I thought, hmm, 90 clockwise, that's really the same as 270 degrees counterclockwise. So I took the 90 adapter and connected it to the 180 adapter and lo and behold I automatically had a 270 adapter which enabled me to hold this controller just as I had, had hoped. So uh, you can actually do that. You can take the two adapters, connect them together and you know be able to use your controllers in a new and unexpected way. So uh, if any of you ever try anything unique with the you know even one of the adapters or with both uh, by all means, uh, give us a reply back in the comments section. I'd be glad to hear, you know, about your new adventures with classic games and, uh, you know, games that were designed to use uh, oftentimes the left thumb or the left, uh, you know, the left stick of an arcade stick and switching it over to the right. How does it help you? Are you a right-hander? Are you a left-hander? What do you think of that control stick by Sega? They put it on the right side, and you can actually convert it to be a lefty if you want. So, anyway, I, I hope you guys can subscribe to my channel if you've never seen Wired Up Retro before. This was a little bit more of a technical episode than uh, some of our other episodes had been, will be, okay? I'm just doing this episode, though, as kind of a basis for some of our future episodes where we might bounce back and touch on some of the, the topics that, uh, that we covered today and in some technical detail. So if in the future we ever say, uh-oh, we're going to get technical, I might say, you know what, I'm not going to get technical, just watch episode three. All right? So uh, our episode four is coming up. I should hopefully have that up in another couple of weeks, if not one week. We'll see how that goes. But, uh, you know, it'll be another exciting and thrilling episode, I'm sure, for a lot of you scientifically minded gamers. All right. So um, give me a like and definitely a thumbs up and a subscribe and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. You guys have a great time out there.